There is still a lot to talk about. I know I covered the event recap in the last video, but is the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus really worth it? Let's find out. So of course, one of the biggest questions I was receiving with the iPhone 8, and I kind of had this question myself, why are they calling it the 8? Shouldn't this be the 7S? Because it looks just like the iPhone 7, and it carries on the same look and style of iPhone we've had since the iPhone 6. In fact, this is probably the longest running iPhone design we've had for a while. Now the 6, 6S, 7, and now 8 have kind of based their sizes after these two form factors. We've still got the same screen resolution, still 1080p and 750p, with of course just whatever around that phone happening to change. So we've seen a removed headphone jack, we've down seen glass on the back, camera's getting better, now we have 4K at 60, which is crazy. But is there any particular reason Apple felt like these weren't an S model? This is the time to move on a whole nother number to the 8. One theory I had is maybe it was a term in marketing because they knew that because of all these leaks, the term iPhone 8 was a pretty popular trend and they may have felt like these two minor iPhones would have been looked over and everyone would only focus on the 10. So perhaps naming it the 8 would give all of that fame and glory that that name iPhone 8 has had back over to the phones that are probably going to be overlooked. I'm hoping they're not overlooked because I still think that while yes, they have bezels and while yes, they still have a home button, they're still probably one of the best smartphones of the year. I think the most impressive one actually is the smaller one with the iPhone 8, the regular size. Yes, it's a very low pixel per inch density for 2017. I hear you. We've had 326 pixels per inch now for four years. The pixels are better though. The colors are getting better and of course it's true tone, but at a starting price of $700, you're still getting a phone with Bluetooth 5.0, very capable processor chip, the A11, which I'm excited to see compared to the A10X as well as last year's A10. The iPhone 7 still outperforms a lot of this year's Android flagships. And now we've got a whole new phone to test with a faster processor with a total of six cores, as well as equipped with Apple's own built-in GPU. And I'm very excited to see how that optimization of software and hardware results in a very speedy phone. Now they didn't talk much about it, but these are also shipping with Bluetooth 5.0. See, when they introduced that on the Galaxy S8, they introduced the feature of being able to connect to multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time and play audio to both. I really hope Apple adopts this feature as well because Bluetooth 5.0, I think, can help bridge that gap away from wires to where we can start having less lag, less latency when using wireless headphones. And I hope that means that it improves the quality of AirPods. And if not in the generation of this year's AirPods, those leaked wireless charging AirPods we saw at the keynote that have the indicator on the front. Hopefully they have the W2 chip or something that makes audio from them sound better. But either way, I think Bluetooth 5.0 is a smart move on Apple to make sure that if these are truly adopting more wireless technology, especially with the glass backs having wireless charging, it's important that we improve wireless data transfer along with power transfer. So while I kind of admit that I think the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus should have been called the 7S because they look so similar, to be fair, if we're looking back at S upgrades. The iPhone 8, if it was an S upgrade, would be quite a substantial one. Usually not much changes. From the iPhone 4 to the 4S, looks wise, that is not much has changed. And again, a lot of things internally were changing, I understand. I'm just saying in terms of looks, there usually isn't a substantial change with the S phone. So like iPhone 6 to 6S, pretty much looked the same. There was a couple more features like 3D touch. The aluminum was stronger that time, but for the most part, really looked the same. Probably the most substantial S upgrade was the iPhone 5 to 5S. That's when we got Touch ID, the improved flash on the back, and the improved camera. But in terms of looks, again, not that different. And now, with the switch from the 7 to the 8, it's a pretty noticeable design change. Switching to glass on the back, that is very noticeable. Switching back to space gray now. And along with that very noticeable physical design change, we're getting all of these other software features that you would expect in an S upgrade. So while I don't totally support calling it 8 instead of 7 as I can kind of see where Apple's coming from. And I think if you're looking to buy a new iPhone this year, if you have an iPhone, iPhone 7 now, and you've been using it for a while, I think upgrading from the iPhone 7 to the 8 isn't going to be that substantial. If we look down at the list, what are you gonna be getting differently? 4K at 60, wireless charging, Bluetooth 5.0, enhancements with the portrait mode feature if you get the plus version. And luckily we found out from the website that the cases you bought for your iPhone 7 are still going to work on the iPhone 8. That was a relief because there were a lot of leaks saying that it would actually be thicker and cases might not work. Not true, it's saying on the website that all the iPhone 7 plus cases work 
on the 8 as well. So overall, if you're upgrading directly from a 7 to an 8, it's not that big of a change. You're getting some cool things, but I honestly am gonna say that if you have a 7, you could probably pass the 8. It's not that substantial. However, if we're talking about the iPhone 10, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say no matter what iPhone you have, getting the 10 is going to be a substantial upgrade. There's so many changes with that, but that's not what this video is about. The iPhone 10 isn't coming out till early November, so I don't want to generate any more hype than there already is for it. I want to focus on what's coming out at the end of this week and what I'll be buying and reviewing for you guys to see. I'm really excited to see if there's noticeable improvements with the iPhone 8 Plus, and I can't wait to compare it, do some photo shoots with it, do some speed tests with it maybe with my iPhone 7 Plus and see how space gray with glass looks different than aluminum jet black on an iPhone 7. I'm curious to see the comparisons there. And forgive me if I'm being more excited than usual, it's just I don't want the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus to be glanced over. Yes, right now I get that everyone cares about the iPhone 10. Yes, that looks cool. But again, we're not going to see that for like another two months. They're taking their time designing them. They're obviously very hard to assemble. So let's just focus on what's coming out now, review that, see what's better there, and then we'll talk about the iPhone 10 in November. Let me know all your thoughts on the iPhone 8 in the comments below. I think if you're using an iPhone 6s or an iPhone 6, the 8 could be a perfectly reasonable upgrade. And for people who are saying the starting price is a tad higher than usual, keep in mind, both the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus come with a standard of 64 gigabytes, not 32 like they did before. And also something really weird before you go, I wanted to mention this. You know how the jet black iPhone 7 Plus only was available in 128 and 256 gig? Obviously the iPhone 7 is still available on Apple's website and now the jet black version comes in 32. Is that kind of weird? I didn't think about that. Like it, it, that didn't exist before and now that exists. It's very quiet release. But anyway, this is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.